Hey guys, Nishquick here, and welcome back to a quick little episode of Nishquick Talks. And I was honestly not going to make this video today because I'll tell you why. I did not expect to come out of this Pokemon Presents that happened today. I didn't expect to come out of it and be happy. I expected to come out of this Pokemon Presents being angry and upset and hurt. I expected my feelings to be hurt. You guys might know from some older videos I made, I don't talk about it much, but um, I'm not really like too hot on Pokemon right now. I'm very upset with how Game Freak has been handling the games, and I'm upset with how the Pokemon company is managing the whole structure of these releases, and the games aren't living up to my expectation. The games aren't living up to what I wanted as a child, as a like a mega obsessive Pokemon fan. This is not how I, like, envisioned these games to be, honestly, as a kid. And with this Pokemon Presents, a lot of people were saying, oh, it's gonna have the black and white remakes, it's gonna be made by Ilka, it's gonna be low effort, it's gonna be whatever, right? I was expecting that, and I was expecting to be mad and upset and insulted, because black and white is my favorite Pokemon game. So if they did the BDSP treatment to it, I would have been pretty mad. But here we are. I'm happy, <laughs> and it's because we didn't get those, we got what is called as Pokemon Legends ZA, I think, I think that's what it's called, it, it's a very weird name, I don't know why it's called that, <laughs> I mean I do know why it's called that, but it's just a really silly name for the game, <laughs> basically I want to talk to you guys about why I'm happy, and the big thing is has Game Freak kind of like won me back as a Pokemon fan? If you are interested and enjoy any kind of JRPGs, whether that be Xenoblade, Persona, Shin Megami Tensei, maybe even Pokemon, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, it really helps me out. Of course, Nintendo content as well, just like this video we're talking about right now. Anyways, Pokemon Legends ZA. Why am I happy with this announcement when I have been berating and like just criticizing every single thing that Game Freak has been putting out Pokemon related? Well, I will say, Legends Arceus, that game that we got in January 2022, was a really good step in the right direction because Legends Arceus came out and it was a breath of fresh air for the series. It was sort of, in a way, the way I imagined the Pokemon series to evolve and turn into in the future. You have not really an open world, but open areas where you can freely catch Pokemon. And the best thing about Legends Arceus was it really brought back the whole idea and the whole, like, kind of feeling of gotta catch them all, that's what I remember from the old days of Pokemon, even into like Gen 3, I started with Gen 3 and 4, gotta catch them all, that was like still a big intrinsic part of Pokemon, and when I played Diamond I almost completed that Pokedex with all 493 Pokemon in the National Pokedex. And Legends Arceus, though it's like a small contained game, it gave me that vibe, it gave me that kind of energy back again, I was like, hey, this reminds me of what I used to feel like back as a kid, in a way. And it's new, it's refreshing, even the battle system is different, it feels new and unique. It doesn't feel like Scarlet and Violet did, it didn't feel like Sword and Shield, or Black and White, or X and Y, it didn't feel like any of that. Because one problem I had with Game Freak is they just didn't seem to be innovating. They didn't seem to be evolving the franchise, it was just a new coat of paint with Pokemon, and that coat of paint was very bad graphics, very poor performance, and very subpar open world design. I, I, that's why I loved Legends so much, and that's why me and so many other people wanted more Pokemon Legends games. And here, they are listening to us. They're listening to us and saying, hey, we know you enjoyed Arceus, here is Za, Z-A, whatever it's called. Um, we, we don't know much about this game, we haven't seen much about it, but the whole idea that they're bringing back Legends is a nice sign, it's a good sign, it's a step in the right direction for them, and here is the big thing that, like, oh my god, if, 
you take anything away from this video from my happiness about <laughs> Pokemon Legends ZA, let it be this. The icing on the cake, the cherry on the top that made me just kind of, it made my worries just kind of go down. It made the stress level kind of go down. I saw that 2025 day and I, 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 I just, I, I was happy. And I was talking to some of my friends about it and we were always critical about Game Freak. Rushing games, putting too many games out at once, annual releases, a crazy 2022 when you have a game to start off the year and end off the year. How insane is that? And now we see them taking 2024 as an off year, not releasing any Pokemon games on the Switch. No DLC, no Legends, no Remake, no mainline game, nothing. And they're waiting it out till 2025. I gotta give credit where credit is due, and that was one of my biggest complaints with Game Freak. They're rushing out games, putting too many releases out, they're just not like pacing things out, they're not taking the time to develop their games, they're not taking the time to polish their games, and it looks like they kind of are now, because there was some reports earlier this year where Game Freak was like, oh, we're gonna take some time to polish the games, we understand, we see where people are coming from, and I said, Oh, I'm not going to believe anything until I see it. No, I, I don't believe a single thing that they're going to say about this until I see it for myself. And here is one kind of sign that they're listening. Game Freak, Pokemon Company, Nintendo, those whole, all three of those parties in unison are kind of understanding, hey, we, we can't do this. We can't release half big products out there because with Scarlet and Violet, I was kind of looking forward to the game, but then I thankfully never pre-ordered the game. When I saw those performance hitches and like all that stuff, I was so appalled, especially after completing Xenoblade Chronicles 3 that same year, after playing a game like SMT5, which still kind of chugs in the frame rate and resolution department, but it still is a functional game. When I saw all the things that was happening in Scarlet and Violet, I was so, like, distraught. I was like, no, I cannot support this game. I cannot, like, like vote with my wallet and say, Game Freak, this is a good idea. I support this. I like this, that you're rushing this game out, half finished, half unoptimized, all that crap. I, I just couldn't do it. I was waiting for a patch, which never came, by the way. So I never got the chance to play Scarlet and Violet, and I don't think I ever will because I don't want to. I don't want to play a game like that. I'm sorry, I don't want to. So my biggest hope with Legend ZA is with this time that they're not going to be preparing for a release this year. They really just polish this as good as it can be. I'm not asking for 60 FPS. I'm not asking for like 1080p. I'm just asking for a quality game that stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with maybe even something on the level of like third-party games like Ease 8 Lacrimoso of Donna, which was a pretty decent port over to the Switch, Monster Hunter Rise, which is more on the upper end of the graphical fidelity and performance, but that's a good example. SMT5, I was saying, it does struggle a bit here and there, but it's still fairly decently optimized as a game. and. I think a good example is something like Persona 5 Royal, like that game originally, Persona 5 Vanilla was on the PS3, and Pokemon games aren't that detailed, it's not gonna be like massive open world, it's not gonna be like, like I said, it's no Tears of the Kingdom, no Xenoblade, it's nothing like that. So if they just optimize it, optimize it for this hardware, just make it a functional game with this extra dev time then I'm I'm happy. I'm I would be very happy. I'll appreciate that if they take that time to just make it as good and high quality as it can be. And that leads me into my final thing I want to talk about. A lot of this stuff is very positive that I've been saying. I'm really happy with this announcement. It's not like a generic black and white remake. It's not anything like that. And it is a Legends game. It's gonna be made by Game Freak. It's hopefully gonna be well optimized or 
releasing it next year, they're not rushing it out or anything. But it, has this one announcement brought me back on board with Pokemon? You guys might already know the answer to that. It's pretty complicated because I've been burnt by the series so much. Sword and Shield taught me a lesson. I bought that game full price when it came out. I didn't watch many reviews for it, I didn't really do my research, and when I played it for about 10 hours, I felt robbed of my experience, I'm not gonna lie. I was very upset with how Sword and Shield played, how it looked, how just I, everything about it didn't feel like a legitimate, fun, good, enjoyable Pokemon experience. And from then on, every single like day one $60 game I get, I do a lot more research on it before getting it. And BDSP was kind of like a very hurtful thing as well, because as much as I was not a fan of how Sword and Shield looked and played and all that, when I hoped for a Generation 8 Diamond and Pearl Sinnoh remake, I expected it to kind of look like Sword and Shield, beyond the level of fidelity and have kind of the same engine, the art style as Sword and Shield did. And here's the thing, for remakes, whenever you're excited, hypothetically, whenever you're excited for a remake of a game that you want remade, you expect it to be a remake, you expect it to be a facelift, you expect to kind of not really recognize it from the original. Like, take Persona 3 for example. Persona 3 Reload just came out. It is entirely unrecognizable to something like Persona 3 FES, which came out on the PS2, or Persona 3 Portable that is even on modern, modern consoles right now. Like, it is completely unrecognizable. BDSP is basically a carbon copy of Diamond and Pearl, but instead of pixel art, it's in chibi art. And when I saw that, when I saw how low effort they were going, when I saw that they were outsourcing this and releasing this, like, almost back to back with Pokemon Legends Arceus, that's when my intense Game Freak worries set in. And I was like, this is, this is not what I wanted. Diamond and Pearl were one of my favorite games ever growing up, and it's really sad to see them in this state, it's really sad to see them like this, and it's not something I want for a Pokemon Black and White remake if they did that. That's why I was dreading this Pokemon Presents, so I was like, oh my god, if they do this for Black and White, whew, that would, that would not go over well. But they didn't, they have this game, Pokemon Legends ZA, but my thing is, we have not seen gameplay of this. We don't know what it looks like. We don't know when in 2025 it's coming out. We don't know any of this. So I can't make a definitive statement yet that, oh, Game Freak has won me over. I am now a fan of Game Freak and Pokemon again, and oh, everything is all happy and great, and uh, I, I can't really confidently say that yet because we don't know much about this game. We know that it's a Legends game. We know the Megas are back. We know it takes place in Kalos, probably in the past. And we know it is skipping out this year and coming out next year. The whole skipping out on this year coming out next year gives me hope that this game is going to be good. And it's going to be well optimized. It's going to run and look well and just be a good quality video game. But what if, hypothetically, by 2025, they mean January 2025. What if they mean, like, March 2025? Are they still gonna stick to their holiday release schedule and go November 2025? Or will they give it to us in summer? Like, we don't know this. We don't know when this game started its development. We can assume it started its development in early 2022 when maybe a subset of Game Freak who was working on Legends Arceus started work on Pokemon Legends ZA. So it would probably be, give or take, from its start of development to its release, maybe three years. That's good for Pokemon, but how is this going to look? How is that three years of development going to pay off? I can't make a definitive statement on that yet, and that's my, like, still little bit of worry there. Like, I'm saying, like, has Game Freak won me over? Am I a Pokemon fan now? Am I, like, 
am I like taking back all the criticism and harsh things I've said to them over the past couple of months and years? No, that still stands. I'm very upset and hurt by how BDSP turned out. That's not how I wanted my Diamond and Pearl remake to turn out. I am very appalled by po the quality of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I don't want to support a game like that. I am happy with Legends Arceus. I enjoyed that game, I bought that game, I loved it, it was great, it was the best Pokemon game I'd played in the modern era since Pokemon Black and White, I'm gonna be honest. I'm glad they're listening to us and giving us a new Legends game. But, there's gonna be a lot more time for me to kind of turn over that leaf and be like, hey, um, Game Freak, congratulations, you've won me over again. But, like I said in the, earlier in this video, I gotta give credit to where credit is due. The fact that there's- they probably could have easily rushed this game out and released it this year. But no, it's coming out next year with no holiday Pokemon game this year. So, I gotta give them credit for that. Congratulations, Game Freak, on listening to us for, like, realizing that we want better quality products in the end for listening to us that we wanted Pokemon Z we're getting like a continuation of Kalos's story for listening to us that we wanted Megas back and we're getting Megas back and for just continuing on with the Legends series because this is keeping the Pokemon franchise alive games like Scarlet and Violet just really didn't do it for me I don't think I'll ever like jump back into that game or ever get it in the first place but with what legends is looking to be i'm looking forward to it yeah that's basically all i had to say and like i don't know i i used to be a huge pokemon fan like i'll tell you how long i've been a pokemon fan and how long it has been since i've gotten that pokemon energy in me you see the shirt i'm wearing right now so this, this pokemon shirt right it's pretty small for me now kind of tells me that, hey, it's been a while since I like actually purchased this shirt, and however long ago that was, that was when I was like a gung-ho Pokemon fan, and now I've like grown up and it's a little too small for me. So hopefully if Pokemon Legends ZA turns out to be good, Maybe I need to update my wardrobe with better Pokemon shirts. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you guys for watching this video. I didn't mean to make it this long. I'm gonna have to cut it down quite a bit, but it's just me rambling about my thoughts on this Pokemon Presents because I usually sleep through these presentations. I usually sleep in, don't wake up for them, don't live stream them, don't react to them. And especially for this one, I was not right. I was not excited for this. I was ready for them to ruin my childhood with Ilka's low-effort BDSP remakes. But no, they came out with the big guns and they showed us a Legends game. Though we didn't get any gameplay, I'm more on the optimistic side for this, so yeah. Uh, let me know what you think about Pokemon Legends ZA in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, this is Nish Quick signing off. Have a great day, go play some great games today. Like. A Pokemon game, but make sure it is a good one, like Pokemon Legends Arceus. Good quality, well-made, innovative, good Pokemon game. Go play Legends Arceus, it's a, it's a good one. I'll see you guys in the next one, later. Hey guys, this is Nish Quick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left and if you aren't subscribed, why not hit that subscribe button on the way out? I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day and see you later.